Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Welcome to another video part 3 in which I am taking questions which you guys are asking me to discuss. There are a lot of questions which you guys have asked. It seems like entire question paper but I am trying to focus especially on those questions where lot of people are requesting like which has more number of requests okay so that it can benefit more of you. So we have already done two more part of uh, these videos where I have discussed few more questions. I have already discussed in case if you have not watched those videos, so I have discussed question ID 701158, I have discussed 701107 and I have also discussed 701178. Okay, so I am going to take two more questions in this video. Before going into that, I just want to discuss, just want to say a few things. Okay, see there are uh, certain questions which think like you have studied something and the answer is different from that but the idea is to understand why the answer key or why the answer is different okay everything is not wrong of course there are few incorrect answers in the answer key but every answer is not challengeable okay there are few i have already discussed in the previous videos which are those questions but most of them which which i have checked are correct one more video I'll be bringing up because I have two more questions to discuss and in that I found one more challengeable question so that I will discuss in the next video but here I'm going to take um, question ID 701169 this was also one of the most requested question it is based upon uh, lanthanide extraction method basically an exchange method and the question says that in the extraction of lanthanides when an aqueous solution of lanthanum plus 3 is poured into a cation exchange resin column the lanthanide plus 3 that moves fastest through the column is or fastest through the resin is. Now I do not have to explain you what ion exchange method is. I hope you have already studied but what you study in your exam or for the exam what, what generally people teach is uh, an ion exchange method okay. Uh, but remember that the quotient was not for an ion exchange but the quotient was for cation exchange method and this is entirely reverse of that. So, the answer which is given in the answer key is option number 1 which is lutetium and uh, you have studied that uh, when the uh, when the anion exchange uh, chromatography is done for lanthanides, the lanthanum, the lanthanide with the with the biggest size, it is comes out first okay. So, lanthanum comes out first that is what you have studied for the anion, uh, anion exchange, but you have studied for anion exchange and the same logic you are trying to apply, but understand that the question was for cation exchange that's why that's why i always emphasize on book reading i know in organic chemistry most of you just study it from notes or some some so other source and you refrain from book reading but book reading is very important i'm not going to show you like you can find this in most of the books but because i want to show you a specific or a, a good reference for this so that you come up with a solution or you come up with the conclusion that why option one is correct i'll show you a reference uh, from uh, I hope those who are doing research or those who have ever done been into research they know about thermo scientific it is a very well known uh, like company a well known industry uh, which basically makes all the instruments most of the instruments which you use for like it, it starting from small instruments like uh, UV absorbance uh, ab like spectrometer or bigger instruments like NMR even cryo EM and TEM like transmission electron microscopy so this is a very well known and like big company this is one of their pages or one of their uh, like uh, uh, you can say it's a guide for ion exchange chromatography or ion chromatography for lanthanide metal you can see in the introduction itself they have mentioned that in the aqueous solution lanthanide metals are present as trivalent because of the ionic properties similar they cannot be separated easily by uh, by cation exchange as trivalent cations however the selectivity of these ions can be increased by the use of appropriate chelating agents such as alpha hydroxy isobutyric acid which is in short HIBA and uh, they have mentioned that lanthanide metal form complexes with HIBA. So, they are talking about cation exchange over here okay whatever this paragraph is is for cation exchange and it says that uh, it forms complexes with HIBA that lower the affinity of the lanthanide for the cation exchange resin two equilibria must be considered and rest of the things. I will give you link for this okay, I will give you link for this in the description of this video you can download this and read it of your own and it says that two equilibria must be considered the equilibrium between the eluent and the resin, the equilibrium between the lanthanide and the lanthanide HIBA complex and all the other things. What I want to show you which is basically your 
question or the answer is over here it says that the secondary equilibrium permits the separation of lanthanides because each lanthanide has different relative stability with HIBA therefore lanthanides that form the most stable complex with HIBA such as lutetium will spend relatively more time in the eluent and will elute first okay so which which will come first lutetium will come first and this is different from uh, your anion exchange chromatography because here you are using two uh, like um, uh, equilibrium one is equilibrium between uh, uh, like the stability of uh, HIBA and one is with uh, with the lanthanide and HIBA okay so you can read about it so lanthanide such as lanthanum which forms a weaker complex with HIBA spend relatively less time in the eluent and these metals spend more time in the resin and elute later okay and uh, this is very clearly mentioned in this particular graph so this graph shows that after how much time this is time in minute and uh, which metal is going to come at what time this is absorbance peak basically for all these metals so you can see very distinct peaks for all the metals that's how lanthanides are separated okay so you see that around four uh, or five minutes you are getting your lutetium plus three and lanthanum is coming late when you are using separation of lanthanide metal by cation exchange okay you are using cation exchange method here which was asked in question so answer is correct according to answer key what you have studied is uh, anion exchange see separation of lanthanide by anion exchange by anion exchange and here you can see that uh, lanthanum is coming first right so this is what you have studied in your notes or something but uh, the question was reversed and you got bummer over there okay fine so that's why correct answer is option number one and this is right answer okay so this is not challengeable i'm writing here this is not challengeable okay no need to waste your money on challenging this question okay let's go to the next question now okay the next question which i'm going to take is question id 70 uh, 1219 it is a question from your uh, uh, polymer chemistry this says that mark hoink equation can be used to determine molecular weight of a polymer the values of empirical constant is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 4 uh, deciliter per gram and 0 0.6 okay these are the values of the constants if the intrinsic viscosity of the polymer is uh, given to you as 0 0.04 deciliter per gram the molar mass in grams per mole of the polymer is closest to okay so let's see what are uh, like how to solve this question so they have not mentioned which constant is what you have to go along with the unit to tell about the constant okay mark hoink equation is basically given as eta is equals to is equals to it goes like k m to the power a okay where k is a constant empirical constant a is also constant the unit of k is in deciliter per grams and a is our uh, since it is exponential power so it does not have any unit okay so with that we can understand that the values which are given to us is for k all right so the value of k is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 4 uh, deciliter per gram and the value of a is given to us as 0 0.60 okay and uh, eta is also given to us right this is the value of eta so we are given with the viscosity which is 0 0.04 deciliter per gram so if you use these and try to solve and you have to calculate this value of m so your eta upon k should be equal to should be equal to m to the power a okay and uh, if you if you take this power this side okay so this will become eta upon k and whole to the power 1 by a okay this is how exponentials are solved if you substitute the values so you will just have to calculate m the value of eta is uh, 0.04 divided by uh, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 4 and whole to the power um 1 upon 0 0.6 okay if you try to solve it so basically this is going to become your m will be 0 0.04 into 10 to the power 4 divided by 
okay denominator will be 1.6 i believe that you had a scientific calculator in exam right so you can use scientific calculator to solve this so upon making calculation you are going to get 250 to the power and if you divide this so here is the thing okay if you divide 1 by 0 0.6 you will get the uh, uh, 1 point six 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 and so on because it's a irrational number so it will keep going on so we round it off and we make it 1.67 okay that's the round off value because this value is more than 5 so we increase that and we write it like that okay so the value of this is going to be 1.67 and if you use scientific calculator and if you calculate 250 to the power 1.67 so this value will be close to like it will be actually equal to 1035 something okay point something which is basically close to uh, one more zero okay so it will be close to 10000 now this is why the correct answer is given to you as option number one and that is right okay this is right there is no problem with this the thing is that few people they did this uh, one divided by 0 0.6 and they used 1.6 as the power so if you do 250 to the power 1.6 in that case your answer will come up close to the second option which is uh, uh, sorry fourth option which is 9600 okay it will come close to that okay but this is not right this thing is not right you cannot use or you cannot do like that um, if you do 1.66 or something that is going to give you this but that's not right as i said uh, the significant figure you have to take care of the significant figure you have to know how to uh, like round off the value and that's why your answer is option number a which is correct option option number one which is correct so this is also not challengeable okay don't waste your money in uh, challenging this question okay so this is also not challengeable okay so that's all for this video i just want to keep it short so that you guys have a lot of interest and you can watch the video completely because if i will make long videos it will be difficult to follow up right so i will see you in the next video where i will discuss uh, two more questions one is from quantum chemistry and one more question is from uh, um, term symbol okay so let's discuss that in the next part